Hey YouTube, it's Cheyenne Lee Bearson and today we are going to be putting together, filling and planting in above ground raised garden beds. Taylor got me these for my birthday. I really wanted them because I've been dying to have a veggie garden. So really looking forward to being able to hopefully harvest my own vegetables. This is my first time doing this. We're gonna be using Huga culture to fill up our beds. If you don't know what that is, stay tuned because we're gonna get into that in great detail later in the video. Um, basically the process of filling up your bed with compostable items such as logs, etc., cetera, um, for your base layer and then topping it off with the soil you want. But let's dive right into this and start putting our beds together. If you like the beds, they are amazing and they will be linked in the description below. So yeah, check those out and purchase some of your own. We started off by unboxing and putting the raised beds together. It was actually pretty easy with the two of us working on it and it went by pretty quick. Thank goodness for time lapse to speed this up. But the other bed Taylor did by himself while I was at work and he said it was much more difficult without my help and took him a little bit longer just because the panels are heavy and you kind of need two people to hold them in position while you're putting the screws in and securing them to each other. To me, this part of the process was actually the most tedious. Just wrapping up, the bed itself looked finished, but we had to secure and tighten everything into place. My job was to hold the ratchet on the other end of the nut and bolt while Taylor drilled into the bolt, um, tightening it all up and making sure that this is as weatherproof as possible. We were a bit worried about fitting this out the door, but thankfully it went through with ease and we got it into the yard. We currently have the hammock right here. We're gonna move it and make room for the raised beds. But let's get the measurements of these for you guys. So these are Blumfeld raised garden beds. You can find them on Amazon. I'll link them in my description of this video. I love these. This is a beige color and I really think they look great. Um, they also have silver. It was a tough choice between stainless and beige, but these are really kind of different. So I like them. All right, let's start with the length. We've got six foot seven for length. That's super long. So a lot of space for your vegetables. For height slash depth, two foot eight. And then for width, three foot three and a half. And they also come in a smaller size as well. Yeah, I just wanted the big ones because we have a lot of rabbits in our backyard, which I love. I try to attract them, um, but they do like to eat everything that they can have access to. So this is going to be quite a jump for a bunny. All right. <laughs> so our next task is going to be filling these up. We've been collecting some debris, like large logs, cardboard boxes, stuff like that to put in the bottom. And then we're going to be layering it. It's a Sunday, so most of the places that we need to go get the supply are supplies are closed. So we're going to go tomorrow and get to filling these up so we can plant my veggies. Today we are filling up the raised beds with debris, cardboard, dirt, compost, uh, topsoil, all the good stuff with, that we need to plant our vegetables. So what we gotta do first is Taylor's going to level out um, one of the raised beds for me because it's tilted way back like this. So we're concerned that, you know, when we add the dirt in, the veggies, the compost, all that heavy, heavy weight, there's gonna be a possibility for it tipping back. And if for some reason that's not a possibility, it's still not going to look as good as the other one. So we wanna level it out to make it aesthetically pleasing and make it, you know, do its job the best that it possibly can and keep up its useful life. Here is what we're working with. So if you look at it from this angle, you'll be able to see that this one's pretty level, right? But then that one there is tilted like this. So that's gonna cause an issue uh, in aesthetic and in its usability. And plus, if you look, if we put a thousand pounds of dirt and it leans all on this, I'm worried that this is eventually gonna oh, break blow down out, and yeah. blow out. 
So I just want to do it the right way because once you fill it up, you're not moving. I do not have the eye for lining things up, whether it's pictures on the wall or garden beds, it's just not my area of expertise. So I was really relying on Taylor here to use his skill set and get this perfect for us. So what we're doing is it's got a slight angle towards the shed. So I'm going to dig out this back side to sink it in about an inch and I'm building up the shed side closest to the shed to build it up just to level it out. With all the weight in it, it's going to settle down. Um, we don't need to bury it because whatever you put at the bottom is going to go to the ground level and work its way out. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be 100%. Okay, so right now, Taylor is leveling this, uh, putting the level on it. So it's about half an inch out of level, but I honestly don't think that matters. This side's perfect. Now that our beds are leveled and are ready to start filling up, we are gonna be doing something called huga culture. If you've never heard of it, we hadn't either until we did some research on this. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can fill your raised garden bed. If you'd like, you can just fill it with soil. That would be very expensive though, and you wouldn't necessarily create an environment of good soil to keep coming up. So what huga culture does is you start out with your densest compost on the bottom, to your easiest to compost on the top. You basically just build in layers. <clears throat> and what this does is, yes, it's more cost effective, but over the years you get nonstop, constant, nutritious soil, micro microorganisms, um, you know, worms, bugs, bacteria, all the good stuff that you're gonna need to keep your plants and veggies healthy and thriving for years and years to come with the way we're setting it up. Um, composting and as you know if you don't know compost is the process of taking something leaving it and letting it basically rot away um, and let it, all of the ways of nature take its course on it and then it turns into dirt so it could be done with leaves with old clothing um, food really anything that you know there's some things you can't some things you can't look into that but we're going to be doing it with logs cardboard lint, composter that's composed of veggies and food scraps, grass clippings, leaves, uh, basically branches, um, sticks that have fell off our tree, anything we can find that's gonna de decompose and feed our veggies over the years, by the way. So this is, this is really a cost effective and an investment in the same sense. We're gonna top it off with about six to 12 inches of good, healthy, uh, raised garden bed topsoil to feed those veggies at first, but over time where their real nutrition is going to come from is the compost that we've invested at the bottom. These oak tree logs will be used as our base. I collected and saved these from the last trimming we did on our tree and we are finally putting them to use. Put the first one in. Our goal here was to line the bottom of the bed with as many oak logs as possible. We really wanted to create a stable structure at the bottom and provide nutrients for years to come. We just filled up the bottom with a bunch of cut oak. We trimmed our beautiful oak tree about six months ago and that provided a bunch of logs for us. We were gonna use them in winter time in our fire pit, but this seems to be more fitting at the moment. So, oh my goodness, that is it. Show, babe, show the camera how big this log is. 
That is a healthy one. Okay. Wow. So we've got a lot. I got to show you guys how much wood we've got in here right now. We've pretty much got the whole bottom covered. Taylor's adding in a few more fillers uh, for any spots that were a little scarce. So this is a really healthy bottom layer right here. A lot of work uh, over chopping up that oak tree and now moving it into here, but totally worth it for the payback we're gonna get. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna provide food, long-term food to be broken down by the microorganisms. So yes, they're gonna get to the smaller stuff first, all the shrubs, clippings, and all the grass clippings. But over time, this is gonna provide food for all the organisms, which is gonna provide for our fruits and vegetables. What we're doing now is breaking up branches and palm fronds, uh, breaking up a lot of the smaller stuff, sticks, and we're just layering the wood with the smaller objects that we have. Filling up the void spaces with these because they are easier to compost, slightly easier than those big logs. What I'm going to be doing next is breaking down cardboard. We've been saving our boxes. These two boxes came from the raised beds. We have more cardboard inside. So what we're gonna do is break it down, flatten it out, and then lay it on top of the wood and sticks that we've put in. So let's start the process on these and I'll go grab the rest. Taylor's actually bringing over some leaves for the next layer. When are you putting those on? I'm gonna put them in right now. Okay, so he's actually, little little change of plan. We're gonna put the leaves in now, and then we're gonna layer the leaves with the cardboard. I think that's set up. Yeah. Down here. I have this piece of lint that I got from pre-ordered food. Um, it came in to like keep it cold. So I thought, what the heck, I'll save it. It'll, it's got to be useful at some point. I'm going to add this in with those leaves that Taylor just put in to add just one more little layer of compostable product in there. Here is what it's looking like right now. Pretty good if I must say. All right, going in next, our pump front. Like I said a little earlier, not only is this the most cost effective way of doing it, but it's also really good for the environment using everything that we can directly from our yard instead of outsourcing it from this last of our palm frond leaf. And then we are gonna show you guys what it looks like inside. So we've got a pretty good mix of stuff going on. You can see some of the cardboard shining through. We've got a lot of palm fronds, a lot of sticks, green fronds, browning fronds, a lot of stuff that is gonna be great compost material. You cannot go wrong. I'm currently on a mission of grabbing the shovel and the rake because next up we are going to be digging up a compost pile of dirt, food scraps, basically just junk and putting that as our next layer. Here we have our everything dying and growing and decomposing pile. 
Uh, we've got some bushes in rehabilitation here, some random seeds growing, a frangipani, a pineapple, moringas, uh, poinsettias. I'm just growing a lot of junk over here. So we are going to repurpose all of this minus the living items like the frangipani, the pineapple, stuff like that. And we're gonna dig all this dirt out, including the little uh, vegetation that's grown on top and put that right in our raised bed. Taylor added in some more oak leaf compost dirt, and now we are about to add in our compost from the box we just dug out. Then we're gonna go to the store and get the dirt that we need. So we move the hammock, put these there. We gotta find a new spot for that. In the meantime, it's just gonna be right there in the way of everything we're doing until we're finished. Oh, boy, I don't know what was worse, the push or the sound of that. If you're wondering why I'm so sweaty, it's about 100 degrees out today. Probably not exaggerating, it's probably like 97. With like 100% humidity, we've got storm, storms off in the distance, but it just makes it really humid. Probably not gonna rain until way later in the day if it does. So right now, super hot, super humid, very last couple days of August. I planted a few things. They died during uh, the summer heat. So I may, I'm gonna have some stuff to plant, some stuff I'm probably gonna have to either reseed or buy, just buy already grown because this Florida summer heat is no joke in August. Whew. Taylor is digging in the last of the composter. We're getting pretty close to the top. Um, we might even need one more wheelbarrow of this dirt um, just because it's gonna settle over time. If you're watching this video because you're considering yourself whether or not you wanna do a raised garden bed or how to do it, this is a great idea for so many reasons. Being self-sustainable in any way is always an amazing feature to have in your life. For instance, is it that much more cost-effective at this exact moment of doing this than going to the grocery and buying? Not necessarily. Over time, you can can, you can save your seeds for the future. You don't have to rely on um, big supply stores like when we had COVID hit. Um, you know what happened with, you know, not being able to get certain items, certain foods, produce was very hard to get. Um, so it's nice to just be able to at least rely on your backyard for some of your favorite fruits and veggies. We are day three on our raised bed project. I'm having a little coffee. I just got home from work and we are about to finish this up. Here's the status of box one. So the dirt has settled in a little bit from yesterday. We're gonna be using this cheaper cow manure and compost. These, these bags are about two bucks um, for to fill up probably close to a couple more inches and then we're gonna use that compost topsoil for the first few inches, add just a little bit more dirt because it has settled, and then we're gonna put the more expensive raised garden bed dirt on top. This is the soil that we got. It was about $8 a bag, but it's two cubic feet. It's called Jungle Growth. I'm sure you can use any brand. It will work just fine, but make sure that it says raised bed and container gardening because it's going to have different drainage and different nutrients. Taylor has just emptied in the compost topsoil. That was three bags in here and four. Oh my goodness, it really didn't do much. Um, so we're about to add those bigger bags in now. Hopefully that takes up a little bit more space. Okay, 
So this is a 36 pound bag, opposed to these bags that are probably about 10 pounds, the cheaper stuff. Think that's enough dirt or do you think we need one more? I think it's enough dirt to be honest. Realistically, we could have added probably one or two more bags of dirt. This is just what we're going to work with right now because we don't feel like going back to the store and this will be plenty. We can always add more on top if we need to. So this is, correct me if I'm wrong, babe, but eight bags. It was 12 cubic square feet of 12, dirt from the store. 12 cubic square feet plus all of those wheelbarrows of compost dirt. I think it was four wheelbarrows of compost dirt and 12 cubic square feet of purchased dirt. Now the fun part that we've all been waiting for, putting in our veggies. I started these veggies back in early July, I believe. Uh, so really they should have been moved um, and put into a bigger container weeks ago, but I just got so caught up with work and life that I haven't had the chance to you know, actually do these. We've had these for about two weeks now. Here is some of what we have. These were in so much better shape uh, a couple weeks ago. I feel bad for them. Yellow squash, zucchini, and some jalapenos. I've also got some butternut squash and some little bell peppers that are in better shape, uh, but the boxes are a little bit heavy for me to pick up and carry over here. So I'm gonna drag them over and then I'll explain which one's which as I plant it. This is my first time doing a raised garden bed. Um, I've watched some YouTube videos, stuff like that, you know, tutorials from other people. But when it comes to how I'm laying out my plants, this is just gonna be kind of trial and error for me until I figure it out. So I'm gonna try to put the squash somewhat near each other and then the other veggies, like the peppers will be near each other. Basically just try to put like veggies with like veggies. These are my butternut squash. Here are some green beans, those are doing terrible. And then we've got bell peppers right here first is the butternut squash. I just love butternut squash, so I'm super excited to get those in the ground. These are actually super healthy compared to the others. I started these off in a cardboard box, um, just trying to do a little reduce, reuse, recycle. They look pretty decent considering they've been in there for months now, so they'll be very happy to make their own little patch in the box. First things first, I'm going to make a little hole for the squash. Pack it in with some nice new dirt. And I'm probably gonna do three to four to a row. Right here's a little bit smaller because it's where it bends. So I'll do three here, four here, and then just keep going and see how far we get with these. I was really excited to plant the vegetables that I had grown from seed. And I think that excitement got to the best of me. I planted way too many of each little seedling in the box. So for squash, you really need to give them a lot of space because it turns out they grow really fast and they just keep reproducing. So really, I only need one butternut squash, one yellow squash, and one zucchini squash for this whole bed because over time they're going to grow and I don't want them to crowd each other out or give each other any diseases or fungus. So what I'm going to do now is leave everything that I planted in the bed and give them out to friends and family. These were in pretty rough shape, so honestly they need a little bit of time in the bed just to restructure themselves and have some growth because right now they're a little shabby and I don't even know how many of them will make it, so planting a few extra couldn't hurt.
Like I mentioned earlier, I way over planted and I have an abundance of squash. I will only need one of each type, so I will be choosing the healthiest and giving the rest to friends and family. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for coming along and putting this raised bed together with me, filling it up and planting our veggies. Hopefully in the next three or so months, I'll be able to get a harvest off of some of these. And then I'll be filling up this bed over here sometime this week with our peppers and green beans. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. I'm Cheyenne Lee Bearson, and until next time, I will see you then. Bye-bye.